Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. and welcome back to Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Where we discuss mental health, mental health related topics in the youth, the elderly, the primary schoolers, high schoolers, tertiary schoolers, college students, university students, trade school students. Listen, whether you are black, white, Asian, rich, poor, young, old, Bahamian, American, Australian from the Czech Republic, once you are breathing, once you are a human being, we have something for you. And it is my privilege to welcome you all back with a new episode and a new season. Woo! I'm so excited. I am so excited, honestly speaking, because last season was tremendous. It was amazing. The response from everyone was wonderful. And I can't wait to produce even more happy moments, more learning moments, more joyful moments. I can't wait to do all of that with y'all. And we get to do it together, which is the best part to me. That's the best part. Now, if y'all want to go back and watch those episodes, y'all could do that on your own time, of course. No rush, no fuss. You could go ahead and do that. Or if you want to pick up right here, that's cool too. You can do as you please. But today, we will be discussing a difficult topic. Now, if you have an aversion to things such as bulimia, eating disorders, or talks of self-harm, anything of that nature, I do suggest that you proceed with caution. These topics will be mentioned during the course of this podcast episode, and I would hate for anyone to have a reaction that isn't, you know, good in any way, shape, or form. So if you do feel like you would be severely affected by these topics, I am warning you beforehand. Now, each episode, we have a certain word that ties everything together, a certain theme, if you will. And the word for this episode, the word of the episode is control. Control. The word of the episode is control. Keep that in mind as we begin. So growing up, I have always been extremely self-conscious about my body. When I say extremely, I mean extremely, right? From the way that I presented myself, the way that I looked, the way that I felt about myself, everything about it was just, it to me, it was awful speaking about my body. I did not like the way that I looked. I didn't like the way my body looked. I didn't like the way I felt about the way my body looked. Listen, I didn't like any of it. And for the longest time, of course, I've mentioned before, you know, dealing with insecurities and dealing with bullying for such a long time. But when you internalize these things and you look in the mirror, and all of a sudden it's like, dang it. I look terrible. That was the thought process in my head as a young child, mind you, because I was on the heavier side, right? So because I was on the heavier side, I would go on Instagram or I would go on social media or I would look around in real life and I would see these dudes who are these bodies, right, who are, like, so strong, like, y'all have muscle, y'all have a six-pack, y'all, like, like, wow, y'all really have that. And then I look at me and it's like, nigga, you don't got no six-pack. Like, you don't have a six pack. Like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? Like, you know, like, what's going on? Why do you look like this? Why? Why? What's the, I'm not rocking with this flow. And it hurt me so badly because I desperately thought, I desperately wanted to be like those guys who had the muscle and who were built so strong, who were built in tremendous, fantastic ways, who, you know, were just bodybuilders or completely just, bulked up. I wanted to be like that because in my mind, all the fat I had on my body and everything physical about myself was negative. That's what I thought at a very young age. Everything physical related to me was negative. Like, (laughs) Like, why couldn't I be bought athlete? Like, why couldn't be like a truck star? Like, why couldn't we run? Like, why I gotta be fat? That that was my thought. Like, why do I have to be fat? And mind you, I have always been, I have always been a person, I love food. I love food. Love, 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 love food. But even when I was younger, 
I would, there would be moments where I would try not to eat because I thought like, that's the best way for me to lose weight if I don't eat. Maybe if I go without eating, maybe if I go without food, maybe if I just, you know, restrict myself in that way, then I'll be fine, right? I'll be fine if I do that. And then, you know, I'll start losing the weight. And then once I lose the weight, I'll be perfect. I'll be cool. I'll be this amazing guy that everybody loves because I tied how much I weighed to my self-worth. So the less pounds showed up on the scale, the more people would like me in real life. That was my thought. That was my genuine thought. And the restricting myself from food thing didn't work because it never lasted long. Like I said, I love food. Always have from a young age. So it didn't last long. And more often than not, I would end up binge eating, right? So I would just end up eating, 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 eating. Because I tried to remove myself from food, but because I got so hungry, I just had to sh- try to shove as much food in my body as possible. And then one day, I said to myself, I wonder what if after eating all of this, I brought it back up. At the time, I didn't know anything about uh of course, I mean, I've heard I've heard about anorexia and things of that nature. And, you know, in my mind, that was like, I, I, I mean, nothing's wrong with me. It's completely normal. That's what I thought in my mind. It's completely normal. I'll just bring it back up. It's cool. It's not like I'm like, <laughs> like I have an issue or anything. Like, no, it's like, I'll just do it this one time, this one time. And then I'll be great. I'll be straight. You know, I just want to taste the food, but then I don't want the effects of the food afterwards. And then one time became two, and then two times became three, and then three became four, and so on and so on, until it became a continuous habit of bringing my food back up. And I would like to say that I would like I I would have liked to say at that point in time. If you would ask me at that point in time, was there a benefit to what I was doing? I would have tried to rationalize it by saying that, hey, I'm losing weight. Like, I'm actually doing this. I'm actually receiving some type of benefit from it. But in actuality, there was no benefit to what I was doing. Not physically, not mentally, not emotionally. It damaged me so badly that I was broken by it. My mind became fractured because it was like, I am going through all of these things. I'm going through all of these methods to try to make myself more appealing to others or try to make myself more appealing to the image that I am seeing. And I thought for the longest time that this was the best possible way to go about it. I thought, JJ, John, Shaquille Poitier Jr., this is the best way to go about it. Just keep hurling it up. Keep throwing it up. Keep throwing it up. And eventually, you're going to get what you want. I mean, the working out didn't work for me for some... The working out didn't work for me. I didn't know about proper nutrition and proper ways to efficiently work out to reduce fat all over your body, apparently, because you can't spot... You can't spot reduce fat, but you reduce it all over your body. I didn't know about efficient ways to do that, efficient ways to diet and all of that because I was a child, right? I was a child. So that wasn't really my primary concern, uh, knowing how to do that efficiently. Not to say I didn't try because I tried. Like I would exercise in my room for hours on end. I would keep going and keep going and keep going until I was so exhausted. And I would keep pushing. I would keep pushing. I would keep striving. And I, I thought that if I did that, and I did all of those things that I was doing to myself that I would finally be the person I saw on that screen. I would be the perfect man, right? My body would be perfect. And then if my body was perfect, I would be perfect because I placed so much of my self-worth inside my image. And I believe, to me, I believe that I stro- I sh- fought so hard to control myself because of my outer circumstance. Because, like I said before, I you know the severe bullying and all of the depression and the, the thoughts of why am I alive 
I couldn't control anything in my outer circumstance. So because I couldn't control anything outside myself, I said, I'm going to manipulate myself. I'm going to manipulate my body. I'm going to manipulate my mind because that's something that I do have control over, right? That's something that I can exert power over. Because I exerted that power over my body because it made me feel as if I had the power to choose how I looked and how I felt about myself. And that sense of power, that sense of control, it made me feel good about myself. It made me feel like I was doing something that was worthy of celebration for me. Because I'm finally getting under control. I'm I'm not going to be fat. I'm not going to be ugly i'm not going to be hideous right and thinking like that is damaging for a lot of reasons a gigantic quantity of reasons there are a lot of reasons why thinking like that is damaging but mainly because i realized no matter how much i abuse my body it would always seem distorted or per- imperfect because it in actuality it was what's in my mind not what's in my stomach Because no matter how many times I purged, no matter how many times I removed food from my body, no matter how many times I exercised or I tried to starve myself, it never worked. Even when there was a slight change in the way my body looked, it didn't work for me. And I realized it didn't work when years later I began to grow and I lost the weight or the weight distributed throughout my body and what's not. And even though I had stopped being throwing up my food at that point in time, I had stopped practicing those habits, thank God. It still, there still was the thought in my head that I'm not worth a lot, even though I've already lost the thing that was making me feel that way. And that's what made me believe it was all in my mind. The pain and the hurt and the trauma and the need to control myself as a person, the need to exert that sort of control over myself, it was in my mind. The true issue was my mind. It was me wanting to control my mind, me wanting to hone my mind and make it mine and tell it what what it's going to do, me wanting to control myself as an individual. That is what I truly wanted. And the way it expressed itself was me throwing up my food or me half killing myself in exercise or me trying to have this perfect six pack image. That's, that's the way I saw it. Because if I could control this thing, if I could control this one thing about myself, then maybe I could control everything else, right? As people, how many times do we say, if I can control this part of me, if I can just control this one thing, I know my life is going insane. I know everything is so crazy around me. I know that I am experiencing so much pain and hurt and loss and trauma. But if I can control this one thing about myself, if I can do that, then I'll be okay. Right? If I can do that, I'll be okay. If I can control how much I eat or how I look or how much I exercise, if I can control the way my body is shaped, the way my body is molded, if I can control that one thing, then I will be okay. How many of us do that? I hope it's not just me. I hope hope I'm not alone in that experience. And I realized that the fight for control is something that I struggled with for a very long time, for a a very, very long time, because relinquishing control or giving up control over what I was doing to myself meant that I was, to me, meant that I was accepting the fact that everything that happened around me was controlling me. So me giving up my throwing off habits or me giving up the habits that I had acquired 
over a period of time meant that I had to acknowledge that my outer circumstance, right? So social media, the other people, the wanting to be like other people, it meant acknowledging that I had been controlled by those things at some point because I wanted to be like them. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to admit that I had been controlled. No, I mean, my whole life I had been bullied. My whole life I had been hurt. My whole life I had been damaged. So why would I now, like, tell me, why would I now want to admit that the things that have been actively causing me to hurt myself are the things that are controlling me? Or the things that I'm allowing to control me. Why would I admit that? Why would I admit that? Now, come on now. Come on. Why would I want to admit that to myself? Why would I want to admit that I am giving these things the power to control me? Why would I want to admit that? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to admit that. I didn't want to admit that. I didn't want to say that. I didn't even want to say it out loud or think it. Because if I lived in a world where I was shaped by the very things that I despised, then that means that I would despise myself. Because I would be no more than a reflection of the entities that I did not like. Meaning that my entire personality, my entire bodily look, appearance, everything that I was or everything that I was trying to be was just based on how others viewed me. They had control. They had control. Social media had control. Everything other than me had control. And that was a shocking rev. I was shocked. I was like, Jesus Webb. Oh my gosh. Because I I had done all of that just so I could say I am controlling myself. I could I had done all of that. I have I had caused and started all of that, you know, just to say that. I can control myself and just to say that I am able to completely and utterly handle myself only to realize that every other faction of my life was being shaped by the things I was running away from. That was extremely difficult for me to process. It still is. It still is. So when it came to my body image, I wish I could say that I, after I stopped being, uh, after I, after I ceased in the activities that I was partaking in, I wish that I could say that I immediately loved myself afterwards. I wish that I could say that I, you know, immediately relinquished control and that I immediately just felt all this self-love and this amazing, I love the skin I'm in and I'm so amazing and handsome no matter how much I weigh, no matter how I look. I wish I could say that I did that immediately, but I did not. I did not do that immediately. I did not do that immediately because I had to get over the hurdle after I stopped throwing up. I had to get over, I had to get over the hurdle of hating myself. Hating myself for not being able to control myself, hating myself for getting the control and realizing that it was even control at all, it was self-harm, hating myself for allowing my, allowing others to control me with their own thoughts and ideals, hating myself for allowing social media to control me with its own algorithms, I had to get over the hurdle of hating myself. And that was, that was more difficult to me than, that was more difficult to me than the prior thing I went through. That was way more difficult because I, I could stop putting my finger in, down my throat and forcing my food up. I could, I could stop doing that. But I can't stop thinking, why would I want to do that? 
I can't stop thinking, what is my reason for doing that? Why did I feel like I need to do that? I can stop the physical part of it, but it was the, it was the mind. It was the mind itself. It was actually the mind that was severely affected. And let me tell you how powerful the mind can be. I felt guilty about eating food. I literally felt guilty about eating food. I would feel guilty for eating food. Genuinely, like I would feel guilt, like straight up guilt, like I, like I, like I commit a sin. That's how serious it is. I would feel terrible about eating food, and I would punish myself mentally. Why are you eating? Why are you eating food? You shouldn't be eating. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to yourself? You already big. Now you won't be bigger. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you doing this to yourself? I would feel like crap for putting a spoon in my mouth. And that is insane to me. Honestly, it's completely and utterly insane because my mind was being controlled by the perception of my future self. My mind was being controlled by what I wanted to be in the future. And that was controlled by what I saw around me and what I saw on social media. That was controlled by the images of other guys that I wanted to look like. That was controlled by that. Like, dude, bro, boy, chill, calm down. Honestly speaking, that's what, that's what controlled it. And that was a terrible thing for me because the mind is such a tricky thing. Your mind can tell you that you shouldn't be eating food. All of a sudden, you don't feel like eating no more. Your body doesn't, your body isn't hungry. Your mind is going to tell you, hey, you should feel guilty for eating food. All of a sudden, now you feel anxious, you feel sick, you feel like throwing food back up. The mind is such a fickle thing. And when you allow your mind to be controlled, when you relinquish control of your mind to the factors and the environment around you, you. Or you will end up in a world of pain, which you give control of your mind to matters, right? What controls your mind matters. And I know someone's going to be like, but John, what do you mean what controls your mind? Like, you should be controlling your mind. You should be in charge of your mind. Let me, let me explain what I mean. If your mind is controlled, right, by the ideals of others, then you are going to do your best to fit into that ideal. If the ideals of others is what shaped your opinion of yourself, if it's what has shaped your concept of yourself and the way you carry yourself, then you are going to do your best to fit into that ideal. Now, if your mind is controlled by the love that you carry for yourself, if your mind is controlled by the love that you have for yourself in the now, in the present moment, and not by outer circumstance, then you are going to do your best to do what feels like love to you. You are going to do what feels like genuine and true love when your mind is controlled by the fact that I love myself. When you allow your love of self to control your mind, you are allowing yourself to heal from the pain and the damage that you would have experienced earlier on in life. But you have to let love control your mind. You have to let your love of self control your mind. And I'm not talking about your idea of love. I'm talking about actual love, truly loving yourself. Truly loving yourself is not willingly hurting yourself. Truly loving yourself is knowing that I'm going to eat if I'm hungry, knowing that every lump, every pound, everything on me, everything is perfect just the way it is because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That is truly loving yourself. Truly loving yourself is being patient with yourself, being kind with yourself, loving yourself in the now and the present moment, not being willing to compromise yourself, compromise your body, 
your health, how you feel, how you think for the sake of others. Truly loving yourself is being willing to exist in the space that you exist as you exist in the best way possible. That is truly loving yourself not forcing yourself to throw up, not making yourself starve, not making your body go without food and water and drink, not doing that, that isn't love. And I'm talking mainly about people who feel as if the more weight they lose, the more they will be loved. Listen, if you want to lose weight, If you want to gain weight, whatever you do, whatever you're doing that's healthy for you, you go right on ahead and do it. But do what you are doing for your sake. Do what you are doing, not because others hate you, but because you love yourself so much that you are willing to have the best possible version of you. Build yourself out of the love of you. Allow the love of you to control you, not the hate of others. That is what needs to make you. Not the social media algorithms, not the social media posts, not the guys, not the people, not the women, not whoever you may be seeing that has the eight pack, that has the... Perfect bicep, tricep, quadriceps, um, glutes, not the people who have the perfect anything. Don't allow those things to be the foundation of your personality. If you want to create a change within yourself, or if you want to stay just the same, you have to start off loving yourself for who you are. I threw up and I forced myself to throw up. I did all of those things to myself. I starved myself. I do all of that. I did all of that because I wanted the person in the future, the future John, the future Shaquille, I wanted him to be the best possible version of himself because I knew that in the future, if I did all of these things now, he would love himself. I was working for the love of the future of the future version of myself when I didn't love myself in the present. And if you don't love yourself now, what makes you think you could love yourself in the future? You have to work on loving who you are, not loving who you can be, not loving who you might be, not loving who you may be or could be or should be or probably will be, but loving who you are now. Because when you love who you are now, you are able to accept everything about yourself. And if there is a healthy change that needs to be made, you because you love yourself, you are willing to make the change. And you are willing to carry out the change. And you are willing to do it in a way that doesn't cause permanent or temporary harm to yourself. That is what true love of self is. And and you will always hear me saying this. I wish I knew that when I was younger. I mean, I was a child. I wish I knew that. I wish I knew to love myself in the moment. Because when you love yourself in the moment, you are loving the entirety of yourself. You can't love yourself in the future. You don't know what the future is. You don't know who the future you is. You don't know the future. You and the past has already happened. You have to get over that. But you have the right now to love yourself. You have the ability to treasure and value everything about yourself, every physical thing, everything that you may think is imperfect, which is actually extraordinary. Everything that you are now, you have the chance to love and care for right now, right now. You have the ability to do it now, not later, but now. And I hope if you are experiencing any type of eating disorder, any type of affliction of that nature, anything that deals with 
you looking in the mirror and thinking that you are less than yourself or thinking that you are lesser than everyone around you than the algorithm, I hope that you will hear this and know that you are loved for who you are. Because if you don't love you, God love you. No matter how you look, no matter how you look, no matter how skinny you are, no matter how many pounds you have, you are worth it. You are loved. You don't have to harm yourself to be worthy of love. And you don't have to control your body in a way that causes such terrible things to happen to you. Just to prove that you are somebody. You don't have to. So, without further ado, that has been episode one of Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. and I've been your host. It was good talking to you all. Until next time.